Funding for Coastal Kingdom is provided by the ETV Endowment of South Carolina, which proudly supports this program. Through the generosity of our members and donors, the ETV Endowment has funded educational and entertaining programming like Coastal Kingdom for more than 40 years. We live in a beautiful and diverse ecosystem. In Coastal Kingdom, we try and travel to some of the really beautiful natural areas of the state and look at some of the creatures that live in those areas. In this episode, we're gonna look at some animals that are relatively common, but almost iconic to the area. We have a tendency to take these signature species for granted, but they're still really fun to see. So look at that little guy. Okay, we got something big on. There we go. We've got the bird in. There's already a chick in there. So this is an eastern king snake, and this is one of the signature species of the low country. Its real claim to fame is its ability to kill and eat other snakes, including venomous ones. But as tough as this snake is, it's disappearing throughout much of its range, and people don't know exactly why. We thought you might be interested in some of the research we're doing to protect this vulnerable species. I love this time of year because we, today we get to work up baby snakes. Now I'm joined by Rachel Wallman and Rachel and I have worked on this king snake project for a long time. And so what we're going to do today is go through these snakes. We're going to process them and get all kinds of essential information, you know, length and weight and things like that. And then eventually we're going to get to let them go. So here's some guys that just hatched. And if you look there and watch this, I'll bet they're all in here. Look at all the <laughs> babies underneath there. So these eggs were laid about two months ago by one of the females that we have in the lab. And it took her probably six or seven hours to lay the whole clutch. Now clutches can be anywhere from about five to 14. But I can pick this up and tell this is all empty. So all the snakes have come out of their eggshells and uh, moved out into the vermiculite. So these have been incubated for about 55 or 60 days. And what they did is they made a, a little slit in the eggshell, and then what they do is kind of pip their heads out. And then once they sit there for 24 or 48 hours, they'll crawl right on out, and they're pretty much on their own. Actually, for that matter, while they're in the egg, they're on their own as well. But really cool. But I think we're gonna wait on these until they have a chance to shed, until they're, they're ready to work out. But there's some other ones right here, and these, uh, yeah, these have been hatched for some time and they have all shed. And look at those. They are gorgeous little snakes, yeah, aren't they? Yeah, they're really cute. So these are uh, completely ready to be processed. And I don't know exactly how many are in here. There's a little shed skin from, <laughs> from one of them. Uh, anyway, there's no real easy way to do this. This is exciting every time you work up this many snakes. And one of the hardest things is to keep them from crawling out of the bin while you're working up another snake or something like that. But let's get started. All right, so we are gonna be on LG 2201. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and select one. <laughs> one, one selected. Get that lid for you. <laughs> okay, the first thing I wanna do. We need the sex of this. And it looks like this is a male. This is always a little harder than you think it's gonna be. <laughs> 12 grams. So 12 grams, and that, that's pretty typical, isn't it? Yeah. 12 grams is a, is a common a weight. Standard these, weight. These guys. So guys, in the past, what, what I would do is I would uh, clip belly scales. It wasn't real reliable. And then I even got to the point where I was drawing pictures in my notebook of the head pattern. And because they have a pretty characteristic head pattern, and then why don't you tell them about what we're doing now. Yeah, so now we're doing photos on them, which I think is a lot easier than trying to do 96 <laughs> hand-drawn 
drawings of those guys. So we'll do the photos and each one is super unique. It really looks like a fingerprint on them. Um, I didn't realize how unique they were until we had a whole bunch of them and you're going through and you're like, that one's a smiley face, that one's missing a neck fan. So it's really, really yeah, cool. And some of them have really fun ones, like you yeah. said, like this smiley face ones. Yeah. I noticed this one earlier. Look at that little guy. That I mean, is so small. That's th that. So there's there's great variability in these things. So sometimes you know they hatch out at regular size 12 grams or so. I can't wait to see how light this one is, but it's noticeably shorter and it's going to weigh a heck of a lot less. I imagine it's harder to survive when you're this small. But what are you guessing? Two? No, it's bigger than that. Think I, I think it's five or six. I'm gonna go four. I'm gonna increase. Made me change it. Three. three. We both lost. You were you were really close though. <laughs> well, only because. Uh... <laughs> so three grams. I mean, and this this is a snake that will weigh a kilogram uh, as an adult. Okay, now for the absolute best part of this, right? We get to release these little guys. Yeah, I'm excited for it. So the reason we're doing this is we want to demonstrate that we can uh, hatch these animals out in the lab and that they survive. And that's really important because we may be able to use this as a technique for conservation eventually. Yeah, so over the past couple of years, we've had four recaptures, which doesn't seem like a lot, but it's really hard to find them again. And it's always super exciting when you come running in with a snake for us, an ID from the computer. Well, and the other thing is the recaptures we've gotten, they've been in great shape yeah. too, haven't they? Yeah. I mean, they've grown a bunch and they've, they've looked really good. So that's comforting for sure. The genetics are from here. So mm -hmm. we're, in other words, we're not bringing in animals from Florida or genetics from Florida. They came right here from this county, yeah. so that's important. Yeah. One of the things we're gonna do is make sure that we put these in spots where they can right away hide and get underneath something, because what we don't wanna do is attract a predator. We wanna give them a, a good chance, for sure. Now, there's lots of predators out there that might eat these, things like, you know, great blue herons and egrets and other birds and things like that, and of course, other snakes and things like that as well, but hopefully these guys will get a chance to see them again. So Rachel, I have one more left. I have already <laughs> released all of mine. But we have a whole bunch more to work out back at the lab, don't yep. we? Uh, thank you so much for joining us on the show yeah. and mostly for working on this project for so many years. It's super fun. All right, here goes this guy. So if you see a turtle in the low country, there's a good chance that it's gonna be this species right here, yellow-bellied slider turtle. And you can tell that a couple ways. One is it has a really yellow belly, and there's typically two spots in the front part of the plastron right here. Now, the way you see these is in fresh water. They're always in fresh water. A lot of times you see them basking on logs and or sometimes just swimming around. Now, a couple things I noticed. First of all, I'm looking at the tail and I'm looking at the claws. This is a male. In fact, this is about average size for an adult male. And what I can tell is size is part of it, but boy, look at these claws. Very, very long claws. And male turtles will swim up to a prospective female and they'll kind of wave their claws in front of her face like that. And it's kind of like courtship in birds. That's how they attract a mate. So females would have, first of all, they'd be bigger and they would have quite a bit smaller claws than this. So this is a male. Actually, there's a couple others in here. Let's see what this is. Looks like another male, I can tell by those long claws in the, in the tail. And then a couple juveniles. But anyway, let's, I'll tell you what, I have some other traps to check. Let's go check those. Here's another trap, but tell you what, look at the water lilies here. I mean, there are a whole bunch of them. Here's, I'm gonna pull one of these. And look at this beautiful flower. And so this is one called Nymphia odorata, and it, uh, you can tell kind of how deep the water is because this has this long sort of tendril that goes down to, the, to where it attaches. Anyway, lots of this around. I mean, it's, 
covering a lot of this pond. And of course, here's the, here's the lily pad formation that they have. See what we have in this one? Oh, it looks like we do have a turtle. Not a bunch in here, but uh, one good one. So we pull this one out and have a look at it. Oh yeah, for sure. So this is a big female. Boy, interesting markings on the belly. Typically they have a couple markings here and not all this sort of black pigment on the bottom of the plastron or the lower part of the shell. Definitely a female. And I can look claws or short, but definitely a female. So this, this animal probably already laid this year and what it did, came out of the water, walked up on land, dug a hole, kind of a flask shaped hole, laid 10, 12, 14 eggs in it. And then those eggs hatched about 60 days later or so. And a lot of times they actually overwinter in the nest. So she lays them, they hatch in the nest, and then they just sit there until the fall and spring. It's kind of a, kind of a neat strategy really. And then they emerge in the spring when it's, there's more to eat, it's a little warmer and things like that. So this is an adult female, but they get quite a bit bigger than this. And really when they reach this size, they have very few natural predators. Now a big alligator can crush one of these and occasionally they get hit by cars, which is really unfortunate, but most predators can't deal with this really strong dome shaped shell. So time to let this one go. Now it's probably not gonna swim off. It's probably just gonna sink down to the bottom, but it'll be just fine. Oh, here's something really cool. There's a leech here. Oh my gosh, this is a neat leech too. This is a real pretty one, if a leech can be pretty. This one has a bright red kind of belly. And I think this is one called Macrobdella. It's a, <laughs> leeches are kind of disgusting actually, but of course they are blood suckers. So they're feeding on a blood meal. And sometimes some, certain species will actually attach to turtles. But let's put the leech down and see, and I'm glad the leech didn't get on this guy. Look at that little cutie. So that's a little tiny baby yellow-bellied slider. You notice kind of a yellow belly in the two spots right there. But boy, this one is not very old. This is a youngster. Probably hatched out earlier this year and spent the winter probably underground after it uh, incubated for about two months and just kind of stayed underground to the fall and spring and then emerged and now is living in this wonderful wetland right here. Takes turtles a long time to reach adult size. So this species would probably be twice this size in a year, and it might take it 10 years to reach adult size. So what these guys have to do is rely on hiding, and they have wonderful cryptic coloration or camouflage that helps them to blend in with all this, this green vegetation. Helps them really hide. So even though this is a little guy, this is a yellow-bellied slider. And again, if you see a turtle in the low country, there's a good chance it's gonna be this species. Guys, I have to admit, I'm in a bit of a shark phase lately. I just can't get enough of these elasmobranch fish. But it's important to realize sharks are important. Without sharks, the ecosystem doesn't work very well. So what we're gonna do is get out in the field today and see if we can catch some sharks. Okay guys, we're running out to one of my favorite fishing spots and we just came up on an American alligator. Of course, this is 100% salt water. Now people have the misconception that alligators don't go in salt water. I don't know where that came from because they love mullet and blue crabs and all kinds of stuff like that. But they have to get back in fresh water so they can get rid of the salt. And I'll bet you that's what that animal's about to do. This is a big animal. I, I would guess this is a nine, 10 foot male probably. Females usually don't get quite that big. Man, that's an impressive animal. There we go. I don't think it's on anymore. 
Let's see. Maybe it's a little sharp. Hmm. <laughs> Boy, that had a lot of slack there for a minute. Kind of exciting. Let's see what this is. Bonnet head. That's a fun little shark. There we go. There we go. Looks like a little female and no claspers on it. So we're gonna get this one right back in. This rod up. Tighten this drag a little bit. Wow. This is a nice fish, whatever it is. Oh man, this feels good. This feels really good. <laughs> All right, so we got some rods out of the way. I'm gonna get my hand <laughs> on This has been exciting to say the least. I have no idea what this is, but boy, there are a couple of great runs there. I mean, I, but I'm, you know, we stopped it and so maybe looks like we're making little headway. There we go. I, you know, a lot of times when you start to get them close, I think they either see the boat or yeah, here we go again. It's just taking line back out. I think I'm gonna lose pretty much everything that I just gained. Wow, there it goes again. Oh, it's a big stingray. Wow. Oh, <laughs> these are really, stingrays are really a pain to deal with sometimes. So the tough thing about these stingrays is all they have to do is kind of turn their body into the current. And we've got a pretty good current going right now. So that puts a lot of force on the rod. All right, I'm gonna see if I can get this hook out. This, boy, this is a big animal. Okay, hook is out. We can let him swim back, and there he goes. Wow, that was, that took a while, and that was not exactly what I had in mind, but still kind of fun. Stingray's just, man, look, there's almost nothing left of this bait. It's like all the good stuff's going out of the middle of it. Okay, so we got a little guy on. Doesn't feel too big. Well, a shark. Oh, it looks like a black tip pop. Yep, that's what it is for sure. I'm gonna get a glove on. Man, are they strong. These sharks are so strong for their size. Boy, what a good looking shark. They are just really chunky and strong for sure so i'm going to put this one back in you always want to get your hands out of the way with black tips i think i think wow i'm already into the second yeah this this is maybe too big for us wow we're gonna rob we may have to yeah throw the anchor so guys, Rob went to throw the anchor, which means what you do is just put a buoy on the anchor and then just kind of throw it out because we knew we were never, <laughs> we would have to chase that fish, but it broke right on the knot. So that makes me feel a little bit better. It didn't come untied or anything like that, but whatever that was, it was spectacular. Unfortunately, it was a little too much for us in our tackle. I feel something on here. Hmm. There we go. I like that. I like when they, when you stop them, then all of a sudden they turn around and just start running. There it is. Atlantic sharp nose shark. Boy, a pretty one. Lots of really nice white spots on it. Boy, these sharks are amazing. They really are. Wait, well, smacked me in the stomach a couple of times. So Atlantic sharp nose. 
But look at this cool fish, beautiful white spots on it. These have really nice white spots, relatively inoffensive shark, much easier to handle than some of the other species. So I'm gonna pop this one back in too. But it's a pretty one. And this is an adult, so these don't get real big like some of the other species. Hey guys, there's something really interesting right here. We can't tell what it is. It seems to be bobbing up and down a little bit. And whatever it is, it's big. And we're gotta go see what it is. I'm gonna try and sneak up on it a little bit. I can't tell if it's a sea turtle or an alligator or what it is. But... Oh my gosh, this is so cool. Guys, we just figured out what this is. It's an armadillo. I mean, we are a mile from the shore, I think, and this armadillo is swimming. And I knew they could swim, but I had no idea they can swim like this. There he goes, he's taking off. I think what we may do is help this little guy out. So I think what we're gonna do is, I guess, catch this little guy and just get it over to the shore because I, I don't want it to drown. A neat little animal. I mean, they're just, they're just incredible. It's not a, kind of pesty sometimes, but uh, see if I can maneuver this boat. Ow. God, he is really, really strong. They are unbelievable. Wow. Look at this arm. <laughs> now, you got to be careful of the claws because they're ridiculously sharp. So what we're going to do is find some land, I guess, because <laughs> he looks like he, was, he or she is laboring a little bit, and I just want to make sure that we get it for safety. So guys, we got it in a bucket, and I don't know <laughs> his head sticking straight up. So this is gonna be interesting to say the least. I think what I'm gonna do, there we go, is what we have to do is put this in, we don't wanna get stuck. And so I think what I'm gonna do is just put it right on the edge here, and he'll swim right over to the edge. And here we go. And there he goes. He's headed right back to shore. <laughs> oh my gosh. That is so cool. He made it to dry land and we didn't get stuck, which is even better. Well, that was unusual. That's something that's never happened to me while fishing. Rescued a few animals from time to time, but never an armadillo. So I better back up so we don't get stuck in the shallow water. Whoa. That, that feels pretty good, whatever that is. I can feel the head shakes, so I think it's probably a shark. But, wow. Nice shark here. Looks like a really nice fish. I'm not really sure what this is yet. This is nice. Looks like a fine tooth shark to me. Great big gill slits. Yeah, fine tooth shark. You know, that's a three foot shark or something like that. Look at the shape. So in, when you talk about form and function, here's an animal that can move through the water just effortlessly. Very definitely one of the signature species we have here. And the reason we have it is because we have lots of clean water, lots of good bait for these guys to eat, and just great habitat. And there he goes. Okay, so we're back at one of my study sites several months later, and I'm hoping we might be able to find one of those hatchlings. Now, I've been seeing a particular animal that was up several weeks ago, so I thought what we'd do is go back to that same spot and see if we can find her. I'm gonna sneak up a little bit here. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and, I'm gonna go ahead and set my scale up because what I wanna do, if this snake is here, I wanna get some data from it I hope this is going to be pretty silly if the snake isn't even here, but I think there's a chance that she may be. And there she is right here. Look at her. I'm going to pick her up and I'm going to make sure it's the snake I think it is. I have a pretty good idea. Now the first thing I notice about this snake is it is huge. This animal has grown so much there's a little bit of a shed skin, but I also want to just make sure it's the same snake. And sure enough, it is. So I can tell by that V in the neck and then various spots in the head. 
this is definitely, no doubt about it, this is the same snake. And again, it has grown significantly. In fact, the animals, I have some that I kept in captivity that I've been feeding regularly, and they're not nearly this big. It just goes to show. Now, I want to get a quick weight, see what this snake weighs. Looks like 68 grams. And it looks terrific. Man, there's not a mark on it. It's hard not to want to hold this longer, but man, this is so cool. I guess it's much better to be out in great habitat like this. Obviously, this snake is getting plenty to eat, and it's doing a really good job of conservation of energy. It's saving that, that energy and growing as big as it can with what it's getting. It's such a neat window of what's going on in nature. And it also lets you know that habitat, good quality habitat like this, is just essential for snakes like this little eastern king snake. So we've seen some great animals, some real iconic species of this region. But believe me, we're not even close to done yet. There's an awful lot of signature species that we still want to find. Thanks for joining us on Coastal Kingdom. Funding for Coastal Kingdom is provided by the ETV Endowment of South Carolina, which proudly supports this program. Through the generosity of our members and donors, the ETV Endowment has funded educational and entertaining programming like Coastal Kingdom for more than 40 years.